Welcome to another episode of 50 Insane Details, the series where I find easter eggs, details and state the obvious about Star Wars games. Today we're taking a look at the original Battlefront 1 and 2 from 2004 and 2005. I figured I've made a lot of 50 Insane Details videos about the new Battlefront 2, so why not go back and check out the old one, because there's a lot of stuff in this game that I had no idea about. Also if you know any details in any Star Wars game, please let me know in the comments and I'd love to check them out. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> On the Death Star map, if you break through the bars in the prison block, you can get into the trash compactor in which Han, Luke and Leia were stuck in episode 4, and I believe it will actually compact you. <laughs> Did you know that lightsabers in Battlefront 2 can deflect almost anything? I love how OP the heroes can be in these games. On the Dagobah map, you can actually find an X-Wing that's stuck in the swamp, which of course is a reference to Luke's X-Wing being stuck in the swamp in The Empire Strikes Back. And if you strike this X-Wing on Dagobah in Battlefront 2, it sparks, just like a regular vehicle would if you hit it in game. If you go down into the cave on the Dagobah map, you can actually hear Darth Vader breathing. Again, another epic reference to The Empire Strikes Back. Yo dudes, The Empire's pretty chill. If you create a profile with the name Jub Jub in Battlefront 1, all characters will appear Ewok sized. In 2004's Star Wars Battlefront 1, the heroes and villains are basically invincible. The only ways you can kill them is by repeatedly attacking them with a vehicle and trying to get them to fall off the cliff. You can also do this with a rocket launcher, but otherwise they'll just keep coming at you endlessly like the Terminator. Get to the chopper! Sometimes while playing as Obi-Wan Kenobi, you will hear the phrase, I've got a bad feeling about this. Which is one of the most repeated phrases throughout all of Star Wars. I have a bad feeling about At certain times on the Death Star map, you can actually hear the Death Star laser firing. I'm not sure what they were shooting at, but perhaps you're playing this map during the destruction of Alderaan. One day this planet will... In Battlefront 2, Mace Windu has a special ability which damages enemies at a short distance upon landing by pressing the left mouse or attack button. And this move specifically is actually a reference to the 2003 Cartoon Network Clone Wars series, where Windu performs this move when attacking a bunch of battle droids. On the Tantive 4 map, you can see E11 blasters on the wall, although I'm not sure why they're on the wall in the Tantive. Four, E-11s are what the stormtroopers use. They're the Empire's weapon of choice, so I don't know why the rebels have them here. Stamina regen is not actually a standard game mechanic. In Battlefront 2, there's a metal reward system called energy regen that's given to the player based on what you achieve in game. There are different metals that can be acquired in game, like weapon boosts, health regen, and an overall damage increase. But once you get this metal 64 times, it becomes a permanent addition to your profile. Did you know that in Battlefront 2, you can actually order your AI teammates to follow you. After doing this, they will not only get into vehicles with you, but also attack any enemy you shoot. And this is something you have to level up on your profile, where only one AI bot will initially follow you, but as you level up you can get a total of four bots to follow you, just by aiming at them with your reticle and pressing the F4 on PC, or the up arrow on the directional pad on controller. Every vehicle in the Battlefront games has a weak point, which if you hit will deal extra damage. You'll know you hit this when the inside of your reticle glows red, and a few weak points include the neck of the ATAT -AT and the back of the snail tank. Unlike every other hero in the game, Kid Fisto has some secret unique abilities which allow him to either dive kick or use martial arts to defeat an enemy. I have another video explaining how to do these, you can go watch that after this. In Battlefront 2, Darth Vader and Palpatine are the only characters that glide while running. In Battlefront 2, Palpatine has a unique ability where he can glide and slam down with lightning, which deals a small amount of damage to all surrounding enemies. The Empire faces every every other faction at some point in Battlefront 2, whether this be in instant action or in the story mode. And they are the only faction in the game to do this. Did you know that the battle droids in the Battlefront games are the only destructible units in both games? Every other unit in the game has an animation for dying, whereas the CIS battle droids will just explode. Something that really sets Battlefront 1 apart from Battlefront 2 is the fact that in Battlefront 1, you can't sprint or roll forwards. This means that your mobility around the maps is quite limited, and you have to be more tactical about when to make a run or, say, jog for it. 
Battlefront 1 has a first person view for all vehicles, whereas this was unfortunately scrapped for Battlefront 2. However, there are mods like the Battlefront 2 Remastered project, which includes first person cockpits. Did you know that in Battlefront 1, Naboo is the only map that has the assault class as a B1 battle droid? On every other map, they're B2 super battle droids, which I think fits perfectly into the Star Wars timeline and canon because in The Phantom Menace on Naboo, there were no B2s. In Battlefront 2, on the Polis Master map, which has an outdoor space section, droids won't die, whereas if you walk out here with pretty much any other creature, your health will drop drastically. Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin actually have the same lightsaber animations in Battlefront 2. Did you know that you can go prone in Battlefront 1 and actually crawl your way around the map, whereas this feature was scrapped for Battlefront 2? In Battlefront 2, you can only crouch. I really love this about the first game and kind of wish it was included in the second. If you target a vehicle with a rocket launcher and lock on, the missile will actually track the target. To lock onto a vehicle, press square on PlayStation, X on Xbox, and Q on PC. In Battlefront 2, the Republic technically has the most heroes due to some of the heroes repeating in the Rebellion, like Yoda and Obi-Wan. You can play as these heroes in both eras. Battlefront 1 only has a single hero or villain for each of the four factions in the game. Luke Skywalker for the Rebels, Darth Vader for the Empire, Mace Windu for the Republic, and Count Dooku for the CIS. But there are no playable heroes in Battlefront 1. It wasn't until Battlefront 2 that playable heroes were added. Did you know that command post transports are only in the factions of the Republic and Empire? These are vehicles that act as spawn points and include the ATT for the Republic and the AT-AT for the Empire. When you fight on Kamino and play as Jango Fett against the CIS, sometimes you can hear a droid saying, Jango Fett here! And he's brought his head! In Jabba's palace, in the audience chamber, you can actually find Max Rebo's piano, or whatever this instrument is that he plays. Did you know that this says Renvar is cold? You can find this Orbesh writing on the Renvar Citadel map. Renvar is actually included in the Battlefront games as an homage to the Renvar art from the 2003 Clone Wars video game, which was also made by Pandemic, who developed Battlefront 1 and 2. The Sky Dome on the Battlefront 1 map, Kashyyyk Islands, is depicted at morning or dusk on the PC version, but it's playable at nighttime on PS2 and Xbox versions. On rare occasions, you'll actually be able to hear Imperial pilots whistling the Imperial March on the comms channel. Snipers in Battlefront 1 actually had a higher rate of fire than they did in Battlefront 2. Clearly got nerfed for the second game. Battlefront 1 also doesn't have a point system like Battlefront 2. In Battlefront 1, you can play as any class right from the get-go, whereas in Battlefront 2, you earn points by killing enemies, capturing command posts, and destroying vehicles, and play as, for example, the Clone Commander and the Magna Guard. And you can actually lose points for killing friendly soldiers, which I tend to do a lot of. Battlefront 2 makes reloading easy because you can actually jump and roll while reloading your weapon. Classes share the same colors in the prequel factions in Battlefront 1, blue for heavy and red for snipers. Did you know that engineers have a passive ability to avoid mines? When you walk over a mine as an engineer, it won't trigger the mine to go off like it does for every other class. In Battlefront 1, there are neutral factions with their own command posts, which you can take over. For example, on Tatooine, the Tusken Raiders will attack both the Empire and the Rebels. And speaking of neutral factions, the Jawas in Battlefront 1 will actually repair and heal CIS battle droids if they're missing health. Seems kind of strange that the Jawas would do this, considering they're not really on anyone's side. They're just in it for the scrap. Did you know that you can only repair repair the shields and the auto turret mainframe in Battlefront 2 after they've been destroyed in the space battles. In Battlefront 2, there's a cheat code for invincibility that's called Most Impressive, which refers to the phrase said by Darth Vader in The Empire Strikes Back. Most Impressive. The cheat code, a good blaster at your side, which gives you infinite ammo, refers to this phrase said by Han Solo in A New Hope. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. If you approach Darth Vader's head in no clip mode on PC, sometimes you can see his face under the mask, and it's quite something to look at. Ammo droids actually say ammo on them in the Star Wars language Orobash. Vehicles in both Battlefront 1 and 2 can't capture command posts, which I think is perfect for balancing in these games. You can't just go sit at a command post and capture it in a tank. You have to be outdoors and exposed. In Battlefront 1, whenever the reinforcement 
count reaches about 28, all bots on that team will bail out of the vehicles regardless of whether or not they're in land vehicles, turrets or aircraft. And this is because the AI is now trying to prioritize capturing command posts towards the end of the battle. And this is something that was never patched out of the game. I kind of like it to be honest. Did you know that water in Battlefront 1 instantly kills you? Whereas in Battlefront 2, you can actually use the water to your advantage to flank around the enemy and try attack from a different position. You will slowly take damage in the water as both the clones and the droids, but if you jump your way through and come up for air, you won't take any damage and can fly through the water pretty much unscathed. Just going for a bath on Naboo. <sighs> And that's 50 details, but if there's any more you know of, please let me know in the comments. And for 101 facts most players don't know about LEGO Star Wars, click this video here. Also come follow me on Instagram, Twitter, join my Discord and TikTok for a lot more content. And thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew, I'll catch you soon.